Now let's take the logarithm of 7 when you're ready. Okay, that was tricky, but you, you worked it out. Good. Never give up. You got it. All right. So, um, so that's good. You came up to the right answer again. Now, again, there's still some steps that you're kind of skipping in your work, so I'll put those on the board. Uh, and those will be best to use to be most reliable, but you came up with the right answer. Um, so the key thing is, again, I'm going to start by forgetting about the log and just focusing on the number. Yeah. To start with, I'm just going to write down the number without the log. And now, we said that we can only take logs when things are expressed in scientific notation. But the tricky part was how to express this in scientific notation, but you figured out a way. So that was good, because we saw that 7, well, 7 is really 7 times 1. And what power of 10 is 1? All right, so that's the key trick that you came up with. So that's good. We already saw um, that we can re-express 1 as 10 to the 0. So here we had to see, we had to have two ideas. First of all, we had to think of the idea of expressing 7 as 7 times 1. And then we can see that 1 is 10 to the 0. OK, and now um, we should take the logs. Or, well, actually, even, even here we should still not take the logs. Now we can put in our references. Well, we know this is bigger than 10 to the 0 and smaller than 10 to the 1st. OK. This is the step that I think you're kind of skipping still. So this would be a good step to write down, um, where we actually compare the number to the references without having taken the logs yet. It's clear if we write down the comparison without taking the logs. And now we can take the log of everything. And we know that the, uh, taking the log doesn't change the inequalities. The smallest number should have the smallest log. All right, and the log of 10 to the 0 is 0. And the log of 10 to the 1st is 1. And this is the answer you got. So uh, again, you came up with the right answer. That's good. And you saw the key trick. We can, how can we rewrite this in scientific notation? We write it as 7 times 10 to the 0. Um, the only thing that would be good to add to your uh, notation is to have a separate step where we just compare the numbers without the logs and then take the logs. All right, but you're coming up with the right answer, so that's good. All right, so without a calculator, the best we can say is this is between 0 and 1. And again, that'll be good enough for your test. Let me point out again, notice again, as usual, the coefficient turns out not to really have much Im impact. It didn't matter that this was a 7 on the 0 and the 1 over here. So what would we have gotten if we took the log of 6? Well, we would have said the log of 6 is between 0 and 1 as well. How about the log of 3? 
Well, 3 would still just be 3 times 10 to the 0. So the log of 3, the best we can say again is that's between 0 and 1. Obviously, the log of 7 is closer to 1 than the log with, of 3 would be. But again, for your test, usually you don't need to be any more accurate than just a one integer interval. For your test, it's good enough to say the log is between uh, these two integers, and then you're done, basically. OK. So um, it's the power of 10 that we're after, not the coefficient. And, and uh, that seems to be pretty clear to you, so that's good. OK. So how about we take? the log of times 10 to the third. You want to take the logarithm of 847 times 10 to the third. Oh, no, no, I, uh, yeah, that'll be good. So let's do that. Okay, so again, now you're using the trick that we talked about, so this is good, the trick of focusing first on the number without the log. So you started first on the number without the log, and the important thing that you remember that we haven't talked about yet today, but we saw in the past is, we can't take the log until this is in proper scientific notation. And this is not proper scientific notation because scientific notation is supposed to have the coefficient um, between 1 and 10. And this is obviously not between 1 and 10. So we had to put this into sci uh, proper scientific notation. Um, and you did that correctly. Um, so sometimes people get this exponent wrong here, but you got that right. So this is the proper scientific notation. The coefficient now is between 1 and 10. We need that before we can take the log. So that was an important step. Um, and uh, then you took the logs of both sides. Um, now, originally, you said uh, the reference number you used was 10 to the fourth over here, but then you caught yourself, so that's good. Now, 10 to the fourth is smaller than this, but we want to use the closest reference we can to make the approximation as good as possible. 
So why use 10 to the fourth when we can use 10 to the fifth? Then you take the logs and you get this. So now we have our final answer. So we know the log was between uh, 5 and 6. And you can see that if you had not remembered that you have to put this into proper scientific notation, you would get the wrong answer. Because uh, a naive person might think this would be between 3 and 4, because they would focus on the original exponent, which was a 3. But this, not, this coefficient is too big to use our approximation technique. We have to put it between 0 and 1, uh, or uh, between uh, 1 and 10, and then we can do this. OK, all right. So um, very few of those gave you trouble, just uh, the 10 to the 0 -ths. Uh, most of those that you were remembering pretty good. Uh, we just had to work a little on the notation, um, so that's good. So now we can go forward and remember how to take the p of something. 